Hey everyone, welcome in to another daily editorial here on the KE Report. I'm getting an update from District Metals talking about some more mineral licenses. Uranium focus that the company has received a final approvals for in Sweden. This continues to build out the company's project portfolio, uranium focused and also base metal and polymetallic properties that they have all within Sweden. I'm chatting with Garrett Ainsworth, president and CEO of District Metals. District Metals is traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol DMX, on the OTCQB under the symbol DMXCF, and on the Frankfurt Exchange under the symbol DFPP. Now, Garrett, this news release came out May 21st. It is for a total of eight new mineral licenses, a total of little over 91,000 hectares. Let's just start off by recapping. With these new mineral licenses, uh, many of them are extensions and expansions on project areas that you already hold. But overall, how many uranium-focused projects do you hold now in district metals within Sweden? Hey, Corey. Yeah, great to be on with you. So we hold five uranium focused projects in Sweden. And the most recent additions have really, as you said, been add ons. So we added the Viken NR4 mineral license to our Viken property. It's adjacent. It's a huge mineral license that actually expands our uh, area from about 10,000 hectares to almost 40,000 hectares for the Viken property and it's uh, largely unexplored but highly prospective for alum shales which are the uh, the host rock for the mineral resource at at our Viken uranium vanadium potash project second largest uranium deposit in the world so we're very interested in alum shales we think there's a huge potential in discovering more and uh, the simplicity of them is amazing and then other mineral license applications that were recently approved are really around Tasho, our Tasho project. And we've lumped in some other mineral licenses called Malgomai and Usterkalen. And just really on the website now, we're just calling them the alum shale properties. They're all either adjacent or very close to each other. But these have all been selected based on good geophysical, geochemical, and the geological mapping showing thick successions of alum shale. So we look forward to getting out there this summer, this spring, I should say, and starting work on them. So Garrett, a lot of this, these lands, there was historic work done here. So have these acquisitions of these mineral licenses, have they been more focused on where you see an easy path to growing resources or simply exploration, potential in the exploration at these areas? So with these new mineral license additions, I would say it's more exploration potential. And again, we're basing that on publicly available data that shows that there's conductive rock in the area, which is a trait of these loam shales. There's radioactivity, which is a tra- you know characteristic of, of loam shales. There's soil samples that show high uranium and vanadium. That's also obviously a, a signature of these loam shale deposits. So we're basically looking for shallow alum shale deposit targets that are similar to, we want to find another Viken deposit because the potential value of these type of deposits with all the critical and strategic metals that they hold is potentially very significant. So when it comes to work plans and even the commitments that you need to give to spending money on these different projects, these different licenses, Take us through how the system works here. I understand within the news release that these new mineral licenses are in good standing for a three-year term, but what sort of work do you have planned? What sort of work do you have to do? Yeah, so the, the great thing in Sweden, you pay for your first three years, and then you really don't need to do significant amount of work. You're pretty good just to do some prospecting, geological mapping, geochemical sampling, with rock sampling. And that, that's what we're going to start doing. I'm actually going to Sweden in a couple of days here to kick off some field work. And we're going to be yeah going, going out to our alum shale properties that uh, we've just recently been approved on just to look at the potential out there. And in doing so, we'll be able to make a decision later on in the year whether we want to reduce the size of some of these properties or potentially increase the size of, of some of these properties. And, uh, yeah, and then obviously I'll, we'll be doing some community relations in the Oviken area while I'm up there and then close it off with a, a roadshow in Stockholm. So it should be a good trip. 
Garrett, any chance that you would also JV bring in a partner to work on some of these areas since you have built up a much larger project portfolio just in the last year-ish? That's a really good point, Corey. And uh, the answer is yes. We, yeah, I think as we go forward here, and, and I think it makes probably makes more sense um, for that to happen when the moratorium gets lifted um, because it's easier to commit to work commitments and everything like that when, when the uranium moratorium is, is lifted, which is hopefully later this year. But yeah, I think we've got so much ground now that bringing in option partners makes, makes sense. What about acquiring more land? Are you going to keep on putting in mineral licenses, building up more of a project portfolio? Yes. As you've known me over the few years, I'm always looking for new ground for district metals in Sweden, Norway, and Finland. Yeah, very active on that front, reviewing projects and, and reviewing ground that's open to potentially to acquire or, or do mineral additional mineral license applications. But we're also very cognizant, though, that we have a lot of ground right now. And I'm a big believer that if you take on too much ground, it can become more of a liability. So there's a good balance that we'll make sure we meet there. Now you've mentioned the moratorium a number of times. We always touch base on that moratorium. There was this May 15th date, the investigation that the government had into potentially lifting this moratorium. That date came and went without any significant news. What can you tell us about where it all stands now, what the government is looking to do? Yes. Yeah. And the, the last, well, since May 15th, I've been very busy answering, you know, talking to a lot of people, uh, explaining to them what I've been hearing. So when the uh, investigation into lifting the moratorium, the uranium moratorium was first announced on February 23rd, it sounded like it was going to be made public. But then right before the, uh, the due date being May 15th, it became apparent that the investigation results would not become public information right away. And the main rationale behind this was that the, the government does not want this topic to, to become a public debate. They are concentrating on rapidly moving this process forward and getting to a proposed bill to be voted on in, in Parliament. It's looking like it's a little tight for this to happen in late spring. So again, I, yeah, I would guide more to a, a late fall where this, where a proposed bill makes its way to parliament, hopefully to be voted on. And then we know that when bills make their proposed bills, make their way to parliament, they get approved 96% of the time. And then once a bill is approved, you'd expect the enactment into legislation to happen one or two months after that. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting, though, since May 15th, as things were quite quiet between February 23rd when the investigation into lifting the moratorium started and then when it uh, was completed on May 15th. And, and I can confirm it, it was completed, but since May 15th, now all of a sudden the, uh, the media has picked up and I've seen a few articles coming out of Sweden talking about the government wants to lift the uranium moratorium. There's a really good article in the main Swedish newspaper called Dagens Industry. And it was talking about this black shale deposit in Sweden called Talvavada that's run by Terrafame. And it's mostly nickel, copper, and zinc, but they're actually gonna start extracting or recovering uranium out of it, starting hopefully next month, it sounds like. But it's the shocking thing about this black shale deposit that's being mined called Talvavada is that the grade of uranium is 20 parts per million. So that's 0.002%. And our Viken deposit is uh, about 10 times that. So it's, and then obviously we have uh, vanadium, very good grade of about 0.3% vanadium, which is not, not in this Talvavada deposit. So the fact that they're mining this black shale deposit in Finland and they're, they're doing it profitably and they see bringing in the uranium as a byproduct to, to add, I believe it'll add an additional 25 million euros per, per year once they, they get up to full capacity. It's, it's very positive for what uh, could happen with the Viking deposit. All right, Garrett, keep us up to date as you have on any movements, especially in the moratorium, but then also the work that District Metals as a company is doing and that the work that you can do on these projects. Let's just quickly circle around to the Tomtebo project here. 
Again, this is work that's going on with Belieden. Belieden is funding the first couple of years. District is the operator at this project. We're waiting on drill results, though. So when can we expect those? Yes. And yeah, I mentioned uh, Belieden is spending $10 million over the next uh, four years that, that essentially started on January 1st of, of this year. And we're the operator of Tom Tabo and, and also another project called Stolberg that uh, Belieden has brought into this collaboration. So we completed our drill program at Tom Tabo. It's about 20, 2,200 meters in, in six holes. The It looks like we're still going through the drill core cutting, which has been going pretty slowly. And we will should hopefully have the drill assay results ready for late late June thereabouts. So yeah, it's a little later than I think originally was guided, but that's where we're at right now. All right, Garrett, thank you very much for this update. I'm going to post a link to the District Metals website so everyone can read over those recent news releases and learn a little bit more about all the projects now that the company holds. Please email me with any follow-up questions and I will follow up with Garrett when we get some more news, either on the uranium front or on the base metal and polymetallic front. Garrett, thank you as always for your time. I appreciate the update. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Corey.